Welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Jo. I'm Adam, and this is the step by step video tutorial for the Quiver Sling Bag. We're really excited about this, so we've got a lot to tell you. If you want to crack on with the sewing, we'll put the timestamp along the bottom of the screen so you can jump straight there. Uh, but yeah, let us tell you something about the pattern. So, Adam, why are we making this bag? Uh, so yeah, a few months ago, we got a very unexpected email asking me to design a bag for the Bag of the Month Club, which is quite a big deal in the bag making world, isn't it? And quite an honour to be asked to do this. And it, it gave me an excuse to actually come together and make a sling bag that we've been discussing for a while, hadn't we? Yeah. If you've not heard of Bag of the Month Club, you definitely need to check it out. We'll link yeah. it in the description. Um, it's like a club that they run uh, twice a year. It's for a quarter and you get a beginner, intermediate and advanced pattern in the pack. It's it's just great, isn't it? It's really it's, good. It's really good. So we're doing the beginner version, which is the first in the club. Uh, so it does mean if you're watching this video before the 31st of October, 2023, this is exclusive to Bag of the Month Club. You can only get it through them. Yes. If you're watching it after that date, this is on our website as usual from countrycowdesigns.com. So you might be wondering what is going on with these little elastic bands. So um, the little elastic is an optional extra feature which I made Adam include because <laughs> I love to carry my sunglasses, but I don't want to stick them in my bag. They're going to get scratched by my keys. So I uh, wanted to have something that you can hook around your sunglasses so they're not going to fly off and you're not going to lose them. So this is an optional little feature. It's also got a little uh, flap with a slip pocket. And then inside, because this is a beginner friendly pattern, it is really simple. It is really quick, isn't it? It doesn't have any more pockets on the inside. Yeah, there's no pockets, but it is made with binding. That gives it a nice structure, but because there's no curves, it's all straight. It's, it's very doable binding, isn't it? Yeah, don't leave because we just said binding, okay? <laughs> if you've never tried okay. binding, just give it a go because it gives bags structure like you wouldn't believe and it's like a skeleton inside inside the bag. It's it's brilliant for this type of thing, isn't it? Yeah. It does mean if you are new to bag making, you're a beginner or you're perhaps new to doing a bag with binding, would recommend using some lighter materials like cotton and things like that. Mm. Um, you can make it easy, especially for the, uh, the pad at the back. Yeah, this, if you use like a really thick vinyl on the small version of this strap pad, it's gonna be tough work turning it out. You know, you can you can do it, Adam's done it, but um, you're gonna have a better time if you use cotton. Yeah, so start with cotton, uh, which is perfect if you're working on a, like a, a domestic or a straight stitch machine, you're gonna have no issues. For myself, I've got a Sailrite fabricator, which is a, a heavy duty industrial, that means I can make it, make the bag using cork, heavy twill, vinyl, all sorts of stuff. It's still easy to be done with materials. Just choose the material you're happy with and that your machine's gonna be happy with as well. Yeah, something suitable to your skills as well as your machine. Yeah. Um, so, it's sized to fit. They're, they're <laughs> right. all falling down. You should, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna make the one in this video on your Janome HD9. Although I will be sewing it, so hopefully I'm okay because I'm not too familiar with your machine. But don't worry, Joe's going to do all the overhead tuition because you're much better at conveying the instructions. How about that? And I'm the one doing the sewing, so it should turn out okay, I hope. <laughs> so if you're wondering quite what size is these bags are, we'll just show you. So this is the small size, and we've got the standard iPhone measurement. You'll see. It fits in plenty of room. And in fact, the large one actually easily fits uh, an iPad mini as well. So that they're, they're good sizes. These little ones are amazing if you're just going out walking, like for quick walks, you can fit your keys, your phone, your sunglasses, which is brilliant. Yeah. So this bag would make a great gift, wouldn't it? Yeah, great gift for anyone in the family. I think it'd be quite a good challenge to make one for the entire family, yeah. matching set, if you're into that sort of thing. Could or be you a bit can of fun. change up the fabrics to whoever, you know, if you're making it for your son or your daughter, you can make it to suit whatever they like. Maybe yeah. their favourite sports team or something like that. So thanks for joining us and uh, we hope you enjoy this video tutorial. Let's get started. Step one of the pattern is preparation. So in the written pattern, it's going to give you some ideas of fabrics you could use. It's going to tell you which pattern pieces you need to print, depending whether you're making the small size or the large size. 
and it will also tell you how to join the pattern pieces together. I'll also link a video here if this is your first time doing that. So we've got the foam stabilizer cut out for the strap pad and we've got some webbing for the strap. If you're making your strap out of fabric, then you will instead have a piece of fabric cut out for that. I'm gonna have a zip tape and two zip pulls. Got a little bit of Decaville heavy stabilizer for the magnetic snap later on. You could use um, the off cuts from your foam. You could use any kind of heavy stabilizer that you've got lying around. It's just kind of to reinforce the magnetic snap when we get there. For the exterior, we're using this cotton fabric, which we've already interfaced as per the pattern instructions, and a heavy wax canvas, which doesn't need interfacing due to its weight. Then for the lining, we've got this plain blue cotton fabric, and for the flap and the gusset, I've already fused the stabilizers on there. Make sure that they're fused centrally on each of those pieces. For your hardware, you're going to need a swivel hook and a strap slider. These might be smaller if you're making the small size, but we're making the large, large version in this video. Then you're gonna have your two little D-rings, a magnetic snap, and some rivets. Using rivets is optional, so each time that we use them, there will be an option to sew it if you prefer. Step two is the exterior front panel. For this step, you're gonna need one of your lining main panels, your exterior front top trim, your exterior slip pocket back, the exterior front pocket, your lining and exterior flap pieces, a magnetic snap, and, and some kind of um, stabilizer, just a little bit will help for reinforcing that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two flap pieces. We're gonna place them right sides together. Now the curve is gonna be the bottom of the flap. So if you have a directional print, just make sure that the bottom is where the curve is. And I'm gonna clip those together. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew starting from the top here and we're going to follow the curve perfectly. So just follow the stabilizer. This is so much easier with a zip foot. So we're going to change that over on the machine and you're not sewing this bit. You're just starting and finishing from the top edge here. Make sure you backstitch well up here. A shorter stitch length will make it much easier to sew the curves. For this step, we're using a two millimeter stitch length. If you don't get the curve perfect first time, just go back and do it again. Okay, so now that's sewn, we need to mark on the lining piece, one inch up and centered. So I'm gonna use this ruler to find the center. Now grab one of the washers from your magnetic snap and we're going to center that over your mark and mark those side slits. And then you can use a small pair of scissors to cut the slits. Now you need to be really careful not to cut through the other side. We're just cutting the lining piece here. If you're using cotton like I am, you may want to use a little bit of fray check on these slits. It will just stop the fabric from fraying. We're not going to fit that magnetic snap yet because it will make it easier to top stitch if we fit it later. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna trim the seam allowance down with some pinking shears. Now, trimming the curves like this is gonna make it sit neater. If you don't have pinking shears, you can just use a small pair of scissors to cut these little triangles in. Just don't get too close to your stitching though. Now you can turn that flap right side out. And I've got a little turning tool here to help me push the seams out. This should just help you get a nice neat finish. If you don't have one of these, you could use a chopstick or something like that. Now I'm gonna take this over to the iron and give it a good press. If you're using a fabric like wax canvas that you can't press, you could just use a seam roller or something similar to try and press the seams. Now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna to top stitch down here and around the curve. Don't stitch this top edge yet because we still need to fit the magnetic snap. For top stitching, we increase our stitch length, although this is a curve, so we're still gonna only increase it to a 3.5. For all top stitching, we use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
If you're new to sewing curves, a matching thread color like this will really help. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna reach inside here and we're gonna fit the magnetic snap. So we're fitting the male part of the magnetic snap. So you can push that through the slits that you made earlier. And then you can put your washer over the top. And fold those prongs back. A lot of people also like to cover those prongs with some tape or a bit of interfacing or something like that to protect the fabric on this side. I've never really had much of a problem with it, so I leave mine as it is. Next, we're just gonna baste this top edge closed. Now you can grab your pocket back piece. So I just wanna quickly show you why we like wax canvas, because this is a wax canvas fabric, which looks kind of boring at the moment. Um, but by the time we turn the bag out, it's gonna have a lot of character like that. So <laughs> that's just an example of why we like it. So what we're gonna do, we've got this right side up. We're gonna place the flap right side up on top. You're gonna make sure it's centered on this top edge. So make sure you've got an equal space on each side and then clip that in place. Now we're just going to baste that in place. So set that aside for a moment. Grab your front pocket piece. So you're gonna to want to find the bottom edge. So if you have a directional print, you're looking for the bottom edge and then you want to mark it half an inch up on this wrong side. Now we're just gonna bring the top edge down to meet that line and clip that in place. We're gonna press this top edge with the iron and then we're gonna top stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now this pocket is top stitched, we want to prepare to fit it. You'll notice that your pocket is actually wider than the pocket back. So it's, it's gonna be a quarter of an inch wider in total. The reason for this is because you need your pocket to kind of pop out. Otherwise, when your bag is finished, this panel will buckle. But we need the bottom edge to fit and to match. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this down so it's the same width as the panel at the bottom. Now the easiest way to do this is just to measure an eighth of an inch in and mark it on each side. Now, I'm gonna do this on the wrong side of the fabric so it's easier to see. And then you can just put your ruler from the top edge down to the mark you've made and trim it like that. We're now going to place the pocket onto the panel. So you wanna match up these bottom edges and get it clipped just along the bottom edge. So at the top, your pocket should be hanging off the edge equally on both sides. Okay, once you're happy that's all equal, you're gonna push down really hard on your flap. You're gonna push down on that magnetic snap and what it's gonna do is it's gonna mark the fabric underneath with a small indentation. Now, if you struggle to see it, you can just kind of have a look and see where it is, but it helps if you make the little indentation. So then mark that indentation with your pen. Once that's marked, you just wanna take that pocket off again so that we can fit the magnetic snap. So pull the back side out so you're not gonna go through both and you want to place your washer over the mark and mark the side slits. So cut those slits just like you did with the other side. I am gonna do the same thing to my piece of stabilizer for the magnetic snap. So because it's only going through cotton fabric, I want something to sort of reinforce it. So grab the female part of your magnetic snap, push that through the slits, then push it through the stabilizer, pop your washer on and push your prongs down. So you can now attach that magnetic snap. Make sure that your pocket is level still so you've got equal distances down on each side. The bottom should line up. Everything should be nice and neat. You're gonna to want to lift up this front piece of the pocket and just clip that back piece on. 
and we're just going to sew across this piece here. We're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to seal off the pocket here. The reason that this pocket doesn't go all the way down is because we're trying to keep the bulk out of the bottom corners of the bag. So now it's all laying flat. I'm just going to clip the bottom edge on first. Then what we want to do is clip these top edges on. So again, I've still got eighth of an inch overhang on each side. So I'm going to, I'm going to first of all, just mark it here. Make sure that that's an equal distance on both sides. And then what you can do is bring the pocket into that mark like that. So it's now lined up with the panel behind it. And I'm gonna do that all the way down this side. I'm gonna sort of pull the pocket in so that it's in line with the rest of the panel. Do the same thing on the other side. So pull that top edge into your mark and clip that on. Okay, so your pocket's gonna be like this, it's gonna be like pushing out. That is exactly how you want it to be. Now we're gonna sew these sides. I recommend sewing them both in the same direction. Either sew them both top to bottom or bottom to top. This will prevent any skewiffness of the pocket and you're also going to sew the bottom edge. Because the pocket is bigger it's trying to sort of push itself out so Adam's using a flathead screwdriver to hold the fabric in place but if you choose to do this be very careful that you don't get too close to your needle. Okay so this panel is almost done now we're going to just take the front top trim and we're going to clip that to the top edge. So these are going to be right sides together. We're going to sew that top edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're going to push this up now. Now if you're using wax canvas, you can just press this with a seam roller, but if you're using cotton, just give that a little press with an iron. Then we're going to top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you're fitting a sunglasses strap, the instructions in the pattern show you how to do that. Um, that's just so that when you pop your sunglasses in there, it will hold them in place. We're not having it on this one because um, Adam won't use it. So the final step of this section is to flip this over, grab your lining piece. So this is one of your lining main panels and you're gonna place them wrong sides together. So they're both right sides facing out clip those together and then we're going to baste around all four sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that's your front panel completed. So set that aside. Step three is the optional strap. So we're not going to cover that in this video as we're using webbing, but you can follow the instructions if you want to make a fabric strap. Step four is the back panel. For this step, you are gonna need your strap or webbing, your two D-rings, two D-ring tabs, two strap pads, and an exterior main panel and a lining main panel. You'll also need your strap pad stabilizer. So to begin with, we're just going to work on the D-rings. So on the back of each of your D-ring tabs, draw a line down the center. Then fold the long edges into that center line and give that a good press. So as I'm using cotton, I'm going to press this with an iron. Now those are pressed, we're going to take them over to the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch each of the long edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now you're going to wrap these tabs around the D-ring. So you want to make sure that the raw edge is going to be on the inside so it will be hidden. Just match up those short edges and clip it together. And baste that short edge closed. Now grab one of your strap pad pieces and your strap. And what we want to do is attach the strap to this top edge. But we want it to be hanging over by about an inch. So I'll just put my ruler there. 
So you want an inch hanging over. You also want to make sure that it's centered so there's an equal space on each side here. And then just clip that in place. And we're just going to baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So it's now time to fit our D-ring tabs. Now the reason we have overhang for everything is because it adds strength to the strap. Um, if you didn't have an overhang and it was in line with the seam, it just wouldn't be as strong. So we need to fit these D-ring tabs. Now there are measurements in the pattern for what, how far up you want these to be. And again, you're going to want them overhanging the edge and you're going to want the D-ring pointing inward. So use the measurements in the pattern to mark the placement and then we're just going to baste those in place. So set that one aside just for a moment and grab your other strap pad piece. Now on the back you're going to need to draw a rectangle which is going to be where we turn the strap pad out. It's a different size for the small and the large so make sure you check the pattern for instructions and you might find it easier to place your box if you just draw a line up the centre. On this same piece I'm going to draw my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance on all the edges. It's just going to make the next step a lot easier because we're going to need to use a zip foot to get past the D-rings and that can sometimes make it harder to keep your seam allowance in place. Okay so now I'm going to place this one right sides together with the first strap pad and I'm going to pull the strap through the hole and then we're just going to clip these together. Now we're going to sew this with 3 eighths of an inch. We're going to use a zip foot because of the D-rings. So you just want to follow the seam allowance you've marked. However, depending on like the thickness of your strap and the fabrics you're using, you are going to end up quite close to this strap at the top. You do not want to sew through the strap. You just want to sew like alongside it. So if necessary, just for this top section up here, you can reduce your seam allowance a little bit. And then as you come across here, you're going to use your 3 eighths of an inch again. To reduce the bulk in the seams we're now just going to trim these corners down. Now make sure you do not get too close to your stitching. We just want to reduce the amount of bulk we've got. Now we're going to turn this whole thing right side out through the hole that we made. This is going to be a lot easier if you're using cotton like me. Uh, but if you are using vinyl or something like that, usually if you warm it up with a hairdryer just a little bit, it makes it much, easy to, much easier to turn the fabric. So I'm going to use my turning tool, my little pokey out tool, to just poke out those corners. So just make sure that all the seams are pushed out. I'm just going to press this with an iron to get those seams to sit nice and neat. Now that's looking a bit neater, we're going to shove the stabilizer in. Now at the top your strap is kind of going to be in the way so you need to really push it in. You want the foam to be on the front side so that the strap is behind it ideally. It will make it look a bit neater on the back of the bag. So I just find if I can shove the whole thing in, then I can kind of work from there to get it to fit neater. If you're having a lot of trouble getting yours to fit, you can trim it down, but it is actually designed to fit correctly and ideally you just want to fit it as it is. It will give it a better finish. Okay, so once you've wrestled that in, you are probably going to want to use a few clips to kind of hold it all together. 
Once that's all clipped in place, we're going to top stitch this whole thing with a quarter inch seam allowance. So watch out, there's a quarter inch for this top stitch. As you get up here, there's gonna be the padding and the strap. It is gonna be bulky, so take your time. You may need to use a larger needle or you may need to hand crank around this section. Now we're ready to fit this to the back panel. So on your back panel, you're gonna make a mark um, centered on the back. Just use the pattern instructions for all the measurements. You also want to mark the center on the bottom edge of your strap pad. And then you want to place this on top. So this big hole section is gonna be hidden when it's placed on here. Match up your center marks, place it on the line you marked and then what you also wanna do is check that this is the same length as this, so it's centered at the top as well as the bottom, and then we're gonna clip it in place. Now this is a little bit awkward, so what you can do is just fold that panel around and clip it in place, or if you are using the right kind of fabrics, you could use double-sided tape or glue to hold this pad in place. Unfortunately, my wax canvas does not enjoy glue, so. We're just gonna clip it in place like that. Next, I'm going to mark one inch down on the strap pad. So I'm gonna line it up one inch with that top panel and mark a nice little line. So this is gonna be our stitch line. We're gonna stitch across here and then use an eighth of an inch to sew around the entire strap tab and back up here. And I'm just gonna remove the clips as I go. Now that's attached, we've got one last step for this section. We're gonna turn that over, place the lining main panel together with it so they're wrong sides together and clip them together. Now we're going to baste all four sides with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. But make sure you're not sewing through the strap. So you're probably gonna to wanna to do this with the exterior side up and the strap folded out of the way. And just make sure you're not sewing through the strap at all as you do this. That's your back panel done. So set that aside and we'll move on to the next step. Step five is the gusset. For this step, you're gonna have your two zip pulls, your zip tape, your exterior fabric zip gussets, two of those, your exterior fabric base, and then your lining fabric zip gussets and your lining fabric base, which has already got the stabilizer fused to the wrong side of the fabric. So you can either put your zip pulls on now, or if you prefer, it's easier really to put them on later. It makes the sewing easier, so long as you're quite confident getting your zip pulls on. So I'm gonna set those aside until later. And the first thing I'm gonna do is mark the centers on my zip and all of these pieces. Once you've got all those centers marked, um, just set everything aside. You're gonna start with one of your exterior zip gussets and the zip. And you're gonna place them right sides together and then match up the center marks and clip the zip all the way along this edge. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and just baste that edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's basted, you want to keep it as it is. So the zip is right side down. 
grab one of your lining zip gusset pieces and place it right sides down on top. So match it up to the exterior fabric and then clip it along the whole length. So your two fabrics are actually right sides together and then the zip is sandwiched in between. Now we're going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. If your machine has a narrow presser foot like ours, you can use the presser foot as a guide running up against the zip teeth, which gives you a really nice straight line. If your machine doesn't have a narrow zip foot, you may be able to move the needle over to the left, which will allow you again to use the presser foot as a guide when sewing the zip. Now that's sewn, we need to press the fabrics away from the zip. So because I've got wax canvas for the exterior, I'm going to roll these seams instead of using an iron. So provided your stitch line is nice and straight, then as you press this back, you should have a really nice straight line along your zip. So clip those together so that they match up. Now we're gonna top stitch this edge here, but we're also gonna just baste these three edges closed as well. So we're using an eighth of an inch seam allowance for all of this. Now we're going to do the other side. So grab your exterior zip gusset and match up your center marks first of all and clip that to the zip. We're going to baste that in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. As we did with the other side, we're now going to turn it so that the zip is facing down. And then we're going to place the lining zip gusset right sides together. So it's right sides together with the other lining zip piece. It's also technically right sides together with this exterior piece that we just fitted. And we're going to clip that together along the entire length. Now we're going to sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, you're going to push the fabrics away from the zip again and give it a good press. If all of your fabrics are cotton, you can just go ahead and press this with an iron. I'm going to clip the exterior and the lining together so that it's easier to sew. Now we're going to top stitch this long edge and we're going to baste the other edges closed. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance for all of this. So if you didn't fit your zip pulls earlier, you definitely want to do it now. This is your last chance. We're going to fit one zip pull from each end. You can see here that Adam has added some fancy leather tags to our zip pulls. These are our added tag zip pulls from our website. Okay, so if you've not done this before, you just, you open up the end of the zip and you put the curved end of the zip on first. You want to make sure that it's equal on both sides. You should just be able to nudge the zip on like that. Then put it on a flat surface, place your fingers on each end of the zip tape and just pull it on. So it's pretty straightforward. If you're having a lot of trouble with it, it could be that the zip tape isn't high quality or it could be that actually you've got the wrong size zip pulls for the wrong size zip tape. That's always a possibility. So you put one on from each end and then you've got zips that are opening and closing toward each other. Now grab your exterior fabric base piece and we're going to put it right sides together with one of the short ends and then just clip it together. Now your finished zip gusset, you can see it should be the same width as the base. If it's not, you can trim it a little bit to match. Um, it's easiest if you're trimming this, you can just trim it down to match. If your zip gusset though is too wide, 
you can make sure that you trim it equally on each side so that it matches. But if you've used a quarter inch seam allowance for your zip, it should match just like this. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna baste this short end with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now we're gonna flip this over so the zip gusset is lining side up. We're gonna take the lining base and place it right sides together on the same short end and just clip that together. Now we're gonna sew this end with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna push those fabrics away from each other and give it a good press. Do that for the lining fabric and the exterior fabric. And then we're just gonna match up the bases. So the lining and exterior are in line and just clip those together. We're gonna top stitch through here using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now you want to pull the exterior base so it's right sides together with the exterior zip gusset. Just match up those short ends and clip them together. And we're gonna baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna turn this over so I'm looking at the zip lining, the zip gusset lining. I'm gonna bring the lining base right sides together with that same end and clip those together. We're gonna to sew this short edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So same as we did with the other side, we wanna push the fabrics away from each other. So I'm just gonna like push them away and press the seam. Do that with the exterior as well as the lining. And then we're gonna clip the exterior and lining bases together as this will make it easier, easier to top stitch. So we're just gonna top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we just wanna baste the lining and exterior together. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, match up the center marks and then you just wanna clip it together along the whole of this edge. Okay, so you've got your lining on the inside, your exterior on the outside, it's all looking good. We're just gonna baste these long edges here to close off the whole of the gusset. Okay, so um, Adam forgot to press record on that bit, but you can see there that we have sewn these long edges to close them off. So that is that gusset done. If you haven't already, you definitely wanna mark the centers now for the uh, bottom, the base gusset and the top, but they should already be marked from earlier. Set that aside, we're gonna move on to the next step. Step six is main construction. For this step, you're gonna need both of your main panels, your completed gusset, swivel hook, and a strap slider. The first thing we're gonna do is mark 3 8 of an inch by 3 8 of an inch squares on all the corners on these main panels. So you can see I've marked it on my lining because that's slightly easier for me to see. And on this back panel, I've already cut my squares out. So once you've got them marked, you just wanna use a really sharp pair of scissors to cut these squares out. And you wanna be really careful because you do not wanna cut bigger than the squares. They need to be exactly 3 8 of an inch square. Next, you need to mark the centers on the top and bottom of each of your panels. So I've already done that on mine. Now I'm gonna grab my gusset and I'm gonna match one of the center marks on the exterior base to the center mark here on my front panel. Once you're happy they're matched up, you just wanna clip along here until you reach the cutout corners on your panel. So the gusset and the front panel are exteriors right sides together. Now what I'm gonna do is look at it from the front panel side so I can see these cutout corners. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut into the gusset just up to that corner. Don't snip it any further than that. This is how we're gonna fit the gusset in a minute. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So we're gonna be sewing from the cutout corner to the other cutout corner and make sure that you backstitch well. Okay, so now that's sewn, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the top part of the gusset and we're gonna match the center mark 
to the center mark on the top of the panel and clip that together until you reach those cut out corners again. So again, I'm going to cut into these, into the gusset here where these corners are. I'm only snipping up to the corner, so it's just three eighths of an inch. Now we're going to sew from this cutout corner to this cutout corner using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so this is where it's suddenly going to make sense because now that you've snipped into those corners, this is going to fit perfectly on that side. So it should just fit just like that. And then you can clip the gusset to the main panel. So same thing on the other side. This should just fit perfectly to the main panel and you should just be able to clip them together so we're going to sew each of these sides with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Again, we're just going from the cutout corners to the cutout corners. Okay, so this is the good part because you can start to see your bag coming together now. You can see what it's going to look like. So what we're going to do to make the binding fit easier, we're going to trim these corners down just a little bit. So don't snip your stitching there. You're just going to like take a triangle off each corner. And this will reduce the bulk in the seams as well. It will give you neater corners in the end. It's time to fit the binding. So this is everybody's least favorite part, but we're going to show you a way that we think makes it slightly easier. So there's lots of opinions on how to fit binding, but this is our preferred method. So we simply wrap it around the whole seam at once. Now, which side are you going to sew it up on the machine? So for me, I find it easiest to sew it like this with the gusset facing up on the machine. So because I'm going to be looking at that side when I'm sewing it, I'm going to look at this side when I'm fitting the binding. This way I can make sure that the binding is covering the stitching on this side. And then when I'm sewing it, I can worry about the other side. So I'm just going to wrap it around the whole seam and clip it in place until I reach the first corner. Then I'm just going to pull it neatly around. I'm not going to like pull it too tight, just whatever feels right. And clip it in place there. Then what we do is we, we just want to create a fold here, a nice neat fold on the corner. So I'm literally just going to push that to one side and put a clip on it. And it's as simple as that because it is the binding on the inside of the bag. No one is going to see this. If you have a shop bought bag, you've probably never looked at the binding inside the bag. It's not something that we're going to notice. We just want to make sure the seams are covered and that it's relatively neat. So again, when you reach the corner, just clip it on each side of the corner and then you can create your fold. Okay, and I'm going to wrap the binding around the rest of these seams. So once you reach the beginning, you just want to fold this end bit. So you want to make sure you've got no raw edges. You're going to fold that end bit over, place it on top of the first bit and just clip it in place. Now, I strongly recommend using a thread color that matches your binding. It will just make it look so much better. And then if you miss a part of your binding, you can go around on a second time. No one's going to see the stitching because it will blend right in. And 
just fit as many clips as you want. The more clips, the merrier. So we're going to take it over to the machine. We're going to sew this. As we reach the corners, we're going to try and create like a perfect right angle. So you're going to come down, you're using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but as you reach the corners, you just want to make sure that you create a right angle so that you're going to carry on with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance through the corner. You may find this easier using a flathead screwdriver or perhaps an awl just to hold the binding in place as you're sewing. So that's the binding done. Now, if you have any areas on the other side that haven't caught in the seam, you can just go over it again. Don't stress too much about the binding. The binding is great for giving the bag structure, but it's not aesthetically, you know, super important. So enjoy the bag making process and don't worry too much about it. Now what we're gonna do is fit the back panel in exactly the same way. So first of all, I'm going to match up my centre marks on the bottom of the gusset to the bottom of the panel. And clip that together. As we did on the front, I'm going to snip into the gusset up to the cutout corner. And while I'm here, I'm gonna do the top as well. So we're gonna sew the bottom and the top three eighths of an inch seam allowance from the cutout corner to the cutout corner. So now your side gussets should just clip straight on to the side of the panels because they should match perfectly in size if your center marks are in the right place. So we're doing exactly the same as we did with the front panel. We're just gonna clip these together and then we're gonna sew it with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So same as the front panel, I'm going to just snip the corners off these corners. This will just help reduce the bulk in the seams. Okay, and now we're gonna fit the last bit of binding. So again, I'm just gonna do this the same as I did before. I'm gonna start on that top seam and I'm wrapping it around so that I'm looking at the side that will be out of view when I'm sewing. Once that's all clipped, you can sew it on with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Sewing the binding on this side of the bag is a little bit harder, so take your time. Don't worry if you need to stop and go and get a cup of tea or something like that. Just don't let the binding defeat you. So that's it all done. Now you can of course use a binding that matches your lining fabric. It'll be a lot less obvious. We chose to go for white. It's really clear in the video and we also don't mind that it's not matching. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna open this up. I'm gonna turn the bag right sides out. So 
So you want to gently push the corners out. They should pop out into nice, neat sort of right angles like that. And you can usually get a neater finish if you push all of the binding toward the same direction. So we're going to push it all towards the gusset. Just make sure those corners are popped out nice and neat. Okay, so it's looking pretty cool. Now we just need to finish the strap. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab swivel hook and strap slider. Sorry, my webbing, because it's cotton, is just picking up all the loose threads from around the room. Okay, so I'm going to put the strap slider onto the strap, like so. Then I'm going to put a swivel hook on this end. Now, your webbing will, you know, fray a little bit on the end. So we don't want to leave this as a raw edge. You can either get like a piece of cork, vinyl, something like that, cut out a one and a half inch square, wrap it around and then sew it so you don't have a raw edge. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is just bury the raw edge under itself like that. So what I'm going to do, now the swivel hook is on, I'm going to make some room here. So I'm going to pull this up like this and I'm going to put the end back over the center bar here, bring it under itself and I want maybe an inch, maybe a little bit less, depends what you're comfortable with, fold it under and there we go. I'm going to clip it back to itself. Now before you fit any rivets or anything, clip this, check that you're doing it on the right part because it would be really annoying if you had clipped it to the wrong section. Okay, so you're just going to check that your strap slides, okay? Then you know for sure that you've got the right bit. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to fit rivets through this to secure it all in place. If you don't have rivets, you can sew a few stitch lines. Just get as close as you can to the strap slider and just sew a, a line down here as well. You can do a box with an X if you can manage it, but it's going to be really difficult with the strap slider here. So rivets are my preferred option. It's much easier and it looks kind of nice. So clip your hook on, you can get rid of any loose threads and that is your bag finished. So there we have it. It came out all right, didn't it actually? It and came out really nice. And as you said, this is a very much a man's one, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is a manly <laughs> one. So Adam's ready to take it out for a test run. Yeah. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if so, we've got another one coming out soon. So I will just show you a brief overview of our next pattern, mm. which is going to be an advanced pattern. So we've done a few beginner ones recently and this time we wanted to go with something slightly more advanced. Here's another version with some grab handles. We are currently undecided. We might do the option for both. This is more like an organizer bag. So there is a ton of pockets in this one. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. If you're looking for a similar pattern in the meantime, like similar level as this one. Similar level is the Travelite duffel bag, which we actually released, what, about a month or so ago. Same sort of construction as this, which proved really popular. So if you like this and you want a bigger bag, then definitely check out the Travelite duffel. Links all below as usual. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.